All right, welcome everybody. This is what's up for your children. <laughs> yeah. And um, it is, what is it, August 3rd, 2021. So um, let's let's kind of recalibrate and kind of realign here just before we get started with the questions. There's again, it feels like we're um, depending on where you are in the world and uh, or in the country, it definitely feels like there's kind of like this up and down energy all over the place. I know a lot of the kids I'm working with right now are feeling it. Um, and so let's just kind of see if we can reorganize that energy just a little bit. So if we'll breathe into the heart space and go ahead and exhale out 360 degrees, create a little bit of a cocoon for yourself. And let's do that again, breathing in right into the heart space and exhaling out 360 degrees. And this time when you breathe into your heart space, release anything out that, you know, physical body stuff, mental, emotional, anything that you're feeling there, let's just release it back out into the greater field, you might say. So we'll inhale deep into the heart space and pick up everything physical, mental, emotional, and then just breathe it back out. All right, so still looks like we could use a little bit of grounding or support in that way. So let's go ahead and inhale into the heart and exhale right down into that earth star. And you might wanna make sure even that your earth star has roots today. So inhaling that into the heart, exhaling down to that earth star below your feet. See its roots. Yeah, this is really important, especially for the kids, because when we're up and out, you know, for whatever reason, it makes it that much easier for them to follow us because they're good at that. So one more, inhale into the heart space and exhale down into the earth star. See those roots. There we go. That's a little better. All right, beautiful. So we'll come back when you're ready. Sorry, I've got light right behind me, don't I? So then maybe that's a good sign. <laughs> so that's a good sign. All right. So do we have questions, Sharon? All right, let's go. First question. I have a beautiful 23 month old son who is nonverbal. He's currently in virtual speech therapy. He's doing okay, but sometimes we'll just start crying like he's scared. How can we support him? And is there more we can do or need to know? And is there something he wants us to know? You say he's 23 months? Is that, okay, um, let me just see here. Um, okay, this is a different one. Um, lots of different, well, a couple of different layers here. First, let's, let's clear the field of the, um, let's, let's clear the field and the electromagnetic energy that's coming through um, it, that online platform, you know, iPad, uh, computer, whatever. Um, it's so interesting because there's, He's, he's interacting not just with the person that is the teacher or whomever is coming across that screen, but he's also interacting with information that is, has to do with the, the technology. And um, so we're, so for all of us, let's just clear the fields of those technologies that we use on a regular basis. Yeah, our phone our pad, iPads or computers. Let's 
clear that and then let's see what's going on for him there. So let me get that out of the way. Let's keep it out of the way, right? So now that you know that, it might be your intention every time you pop open that computer iPad that you um, you intend, you claim that there's, there's no interference between um, him and the person that he's speaking to or his speech therapist. So, um, but let me see what else is here. I think, honestly, I think the majority of it is, was that. There's also, um, you know, again, these energetically sensitive kids are not just picking up the information of the, you know, they're just not picking up visual information. Um, they're picking up multiple layers of information. And even at his young age of 23 months, he may not know or be able to articulate or voice exactly what he's picking up. But I also have a feeling that, um, you know, like all of us, this speech pathologist is probably going up and down in her own um, in her own experience. And sometimes what he's picking up through that screen is, uh, you know, is that she's in a really stable place and other times not so much, right? And so we can understand that because quite frankly, we're all kind of riding that wave um, right now. So no blame, shame or condemnation or anything like that. It's simply, again, setting that intention as you come onto the screen that one, that the screen itself is cleared, but also that, um, that we're just sending her love. We're just sending her appreciation. We're sending her, gratitude for showing up in the moment and working with him. And then you'll, then you'll notice that that energy starts to, that anxious energy for him starts to drop. Yeah. So I hope that's helpful. Okay. Next question is, could Susie elaborate on the filter scene during the last sanctuary call? And was this removed for everyone or just the kids? No, um, I'm still processing that one. Actually, um, that was quite a that was quite a little journey. I gotta say, um, it was as I understand it was removed for everybody. It wasn't just the kids. The kids just happened to have the capacity to point us in the right direction because of their expanded uh, sight or their expanded. Uh, connection points, access points. Um, so clearly I, I was not aware of where they were leading us during that call at all, because when I saw that it, it, I think the ramifications of that quite honestly are huge and will be, we will be noticing that within ourselves um, as we move forward in these next months and years and that kind of thing. But one of the things that I will absolutely say is now is a great time. It, you might have already been aligning yourselves um, with, you know, with the future. You might, or positive future. You might have already been aligning yourselves with, with grace or heaven on earth or whatever is, whatever could come out of this experience of dismantling the old, right? So if you've been doing that before and you felt like it just wasn't quite clicking or something like that, do it again. I think a lot of the energy right now has to, it, when we cleared that field or that filter, the field of suffering, um, I, I think that was an awful lot of what was preventing us from having those lower frequencies access some of those higher frequencies within us. So start plugging back in again and see what happens there. So. Uh, how can we support our adult nonverbal family member to make their own choice about whether they will allow the vaccine to be administered? Uh, every time I get one of these questions, I. Well, I'll look energetically to see, and then I'll um, also give a little bit of my own personal feeling on this. Um, and I've, 
I was just having a question, I mean, a conversation last night with a, another client about this. And um, so how old is he? Again, Sharon? Uh, 46 female. 46, oh shit, sorry, 46 female. Okay, so yeah, let's, um, you know, uh, You know, this particular, let me see. There's a lot of, well, there's just a lot of conflict here, right? Um, there's a lot of conflict. The, the information that is being um, shared and or, I don't feel like you're the only one that's giving that information or, or presenting. It's, I don't know if she's, um, you know, in a, some kind of care home or if she's being supported by, you know, other family members or there's other information. But um, what's interesting is in this case, I don't necessarily see the choice that's being made being necessarily her choice, I guess is the only way I can say it. It's almost like more like coming from uh, uh, a, a bombardment of what is required or what is needed or something along those lines. Um, it doesn't feel like, I don't see her kind of going, okay, I'm, I'm gonna look through this, do the research, figure out what I wanna do or what I don't wanna do for myself. It's almost like it's coming from and needs to come you know, from other sources. Yes, she's saying that it's uh, a fam other family members are for pro vaccine and that the government is her guardian and she is in a care home. Okay, yeah. Okay, so that that all makes perfect sense. So, um, so from that standpoint, I mean, you're in a fairly challenging position, um, as you are, you know, probably on a regular basis. So um, I Well, I'll just say what is coming to me. And that is that I would strongly object. I would strongly object because regardless of what happens, um, I feel like it's just necessary for, I think it's necessary for it to be um, written down somewhere that you strongly object. Yeah, um, yeah, challenging position I know you're in and um, and I know you've been pushing that now that I'm understanding that I'm putting two and two as to who I'm speaking to, but that, and I know that that's been, it's been part of that, you know, process for you for quite some time, but that's the role that you play quite honestly. And, um, and every step of the way, it, these things need to be uh, documented. <laughs> documented. Yeah. All right. And then uh, also with um, each member of the collective, are they inter aware with the interaction with Susie and how it feels and the benefits of it? Tell me that again with the collective consciousness of the children or the collective consciousness the, of the, the her family that she's involved in in this situation. Oh, gotcha. Um, is I want to make sure I got the question right. Is she aware of the collective consciousness and the the push pull that's going on within that collective consciousness? Is that what you're saying? She's wondering when she interacts with this form, is she aware of the benefits? This form. Okay, sorry, I was missing the. Um... Well, yes. And what I'll say is it's like it, um... 
it, what I'll say is it, it amps up her resilience. Yeah, it's like, as we're having these conversations, not just the questions that you're asking, but the, all of these questions and, and you know, whatever comes in to support the answering of these questions, um, which is definitely not limited to Susie's little brain because that wouldn't do it at all. So, but yeah, she definitely is. Um, yeah, it's, well, that's what I'm seeing. It's like a filling up of her resilience. And she also has been through an awful lot, you know, in her years. And so it's almost like plugging into a frequency that understands, you know, and what would happen to any one of us if we were held and loved and appreciated for who we were, you know, despite anything that was going on physically, mentally, emotionally for us, you know, it's like, so that she plugs into that and it just amps up that resilience. Yeah. Is the degree of lack of integration for a child with autism related to the level of access they have? Wondering why some kids with autism have an easier time integrating than others. Yeah, this is really complex, actually. Um, there are so many different facets that go into integration, not the least of which is the the role that that particular essence plays you know for their families for themselves for humanity so there's a lot of different facets that go into um, integration what i will say is that um, it seems to me that generally speaking and this is a general statement it's going to get easier and easier for kids who are younger and younger who come in with that diagnosis to work themselves out of that diagnosis, right? And a lot of that has to do with the fact that, um, you know, like let's say an older individual who has had this diagnosis for quite some time, when they entered, you know, a 47 year old, let's say that has this diagnosis that entered the earth plane you know, that long ago, you think about where the consciousness was at that time. Um, I mean, I know I've only been talking about this for 20 plus years, and there was no conversation 20 years ago. So you think about 47 years ago. I mean, it's, people are just seeing what they're seeing. They're not capable at that level of collective consciousness to see any deeper and even 20 years ago, as I was seeing a little bit deeper, you still couldn't convince people that there was something beyond what they were seeing. And so, and so it's not also just a matter of that, let's say that, uh, that essence or that soul's choice. It also is what is the collective energy that they have come into because that plays a role too, that's their environment. So that's why as we're, you know, as we have more and more conversations like this, as there's more and more people out in the world who are speaking about the gifts and the, the unique differences and the capacities of this population, it's just making it that much easier. And then you've also got a whole world that is uh, an old structure, let's say, that's crumbling around us. Well, that old structure was also not allowing them to be fully present because a long time ago, I mean, they said, the only way we can, we can fully be here is when here is love, yeah? And so you can see what's going on out in the world right now. It's like, ah, the dismantling of all that separation, of all that hate, of all that manipulation and control and all of that fun stuff. And, but that very, uh, dismantling is also allowing love to rise up. So that's why I'm saying, just watch future generations of this population. They're just gonna be able to anchor that much easier, so. Okay, this past weekend, I interacted with a young girl with her parents whom I didn't know. I was on a walk and offered to take their picture. Then I crouched beside the girl to connect with her. She took my hand and smelled it. I was curious about 
this and wondering if this is a way she takes in information. It felt like a brief yet heartwarming connection. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, the, all five of their senses, physical senses are heightened to multi-dimensional levels, let's say. And so very often, I mean, you think about most humans have been kind of dulled out of the sense of smell. Um, dogs still have it, right? Our pets still have it. They really take in so much information. Um, and so, you know, our sense of taste and our sense of smell for most humans has been dulled down quite a bit. And it's that, that one, it's that amazing sensory exper experience of literally taking something in and smelling it. But, but there's also the taking in information. Um, and, you know, I, I can tell you that I've seen a lot of kids. I watched one kid in a preschool a long time ago. Um, he used to, he used to smell the, I was the speech pathologist in the room and the teacher was there and he used to smell her arm. And then he would look at me and he had these big eyes once. And he was, um, he just came over to me one day and said, she's sick. And I, and he could literally smell that there, she was having chemotherapy at the time and wasn't telling anybody about it. She didn't look any different, you know, but again, he could smell it um, in her skin and was able to say that she was sick. I've had kids, you know, like walk up to people. It was so cute. I had one kid, I worked with an OT way back in the day. She was just brilliant. And, and um, she was pregnant, but not showing. And he walked up and he put his head like right on her stomach and then said, said baby like that. And then she looked at me and she said, I was going to tell you I was pregnant today, but it seems like somebody already did it for me. So um, yeah, definitely taking in information. Um, yeah. And that information goes, goes into your physical, mental, emotional information. It can also go into other lifetimes of information, other dimensions of information. I mean, depending on what, I, I met a kid the other day or through his mother, I haven't physically met him yet. And he was, she was telling me that when he stands in front of somebody, he reads their whole field and then he acts it out. So if they've had this traumatic experience, he's, and how traumatic is that for him to be reliving that, you know? And so um, it's just, I mean, it, it's phenomenal in many ways what they have access to. And it's also true that we want to, um, we, we want to create some kind of dialogue or conversation or awareness around this because it's one thing to feel and see and sense all of that it's quite another thing to um process it yeah to actually move it through so how are the autistic collective Susie tunes into feeling and coping during this ascension prop period good question um Let's find out in the moment here. You know, um, again, this has an awful lot to do with where they are in their own process. So, so honestly, some of the ones that have been here longer, in many ways, as far as the emotional components and that are, they're actually kind of doing better. You know, it's in many ways there um, and they have access and spend an awful lot of time in um, other dimensions and other realms, other realities. So when it gets, when the heat gets turned up here a little bit, they're somewhere else, you know? And so they seem to be, um, they seem to be negotiating the actual physical, mental, emotional experience of what's going on right now a little bit easier. The ones that are a little bit younger and a little bit more embodied, I'll say, 
are also a little bit more tuned into the emotional energy, not, you know, of their parents, of professionals that are working with them, of the, the discombobulation that's going on for everybody, you know, all kinds of things are changing. Um, and so they're, they have a tendency to notice that more. Um, and so what, what I want to say about that particular piece, so especially for these younger ones, and especially if you think they don't really understand you when you're saying this emotion is up or this, there's a lot going on out in the world, say it to them anyway, because even though you, they might not cognitively be getting each word, energetically, they are more than capable of understanding and as you're talking about it, as you're giving them some, some awareness about what's happening, then it makes it easier for them because then they don't feel like it's them. It, it doesn't feel like it's like this is the energy that's me. It feels like, oh, okay, I'm absorbing this energy. Um, and that can be helpful in and of itself. It's also helpful for parents to actually articulate what's going on or professionals to articulate what's going on for themselves because it diminishes some of their own anxiety and fear, you know, just saying what is. Um, and so that makes it, um, and then there's also this, like I say, there's also this other population that have been working on their integration. I know several of these kids are my clients actually, but a lot of these kids have been working on their own integration for quite some time and are consciously doing that. And I think for that population, this everything that's going on right now, even though it's so all over the place for most of us, like I was saying earlier, it's opening a space for them to land like never before. So they're, they're navigating that um, consciously and using that energy to find a place here so yeah uh my 16 year old son has the behavior of putting his hands down down his pants and the school wants to buckle up tight to avoid that behavior i would want to suggest alternative options rather than restraining restraining him that way what do you suggest <laughs> you suggest compassion <laughs> I suggest compassion. Um, it's uh, you know, honestly, I from their perspective, from I'm gonna lend a little compassion in their direction first. So I understand from their point of view why that is done, and you know, it's it, you know, it's. A behavioral kind of thing. It's a, an addictive kind of behavior. And so from that perspective, you know, if it's not, if it's not as accessible, um, then over the, the, the idea is that maybe that over time that behavior starts to wane, right? Because it's just, if you, if he can do that every time he just feels like it, then, you know, of course he's going to do it every time he feels like it. So, but here's the other side of it. It's like, why, why that? You know, again, you've got an individual that has heightened energetic sensitivity. And I mean, one of the most sensitive places on the body is right where he's got his hands, quite frankly, you know? And so, and again, it's depending on where he is in his own development, he's going to be feeling different energies that are natural to every human being. So again, it's um, in some ways, it's not different than the, the little boy who finds out, oh, this feels really good, right? And, and then is punished for, for that pleasure. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't really sync up. And so, and in this way, in this particular child, it's not even so much that it's a, um, let, I'll say like a sexual pleasure or a sensual pleasure in the, a cognitive way. It's more like, 
I can feel that energy. I can feel that energy moving. It feels good, right? Something's happening and it feels good. I, you know, and so of course you're naturally going to move your attention, your touch, your focus to that part of your body. And so can we talk to him about that? Again, can we have some dialogue or some conversation? Um, can we can we just share what that energy is about instead of making it a wrongness? Yeah. Um, and yeah, and there's also the conversation around just like you would have with you know any other young boy, there are appropriate places to do that, and there are you know not appropriate places to do that. And um and I think that that's something that is, you know, again, we somehow kind of assume that whatever differences, you know, this young man has, that everything gets piled on to, well, the reason he's doing that is because of his difference. Well, no, in many ways, it's just like everybody else, you know, <laughs> that same energy is flowing through him, just like it's flowing through everybody else the way he handles it looks different but we can still have the conversation we can still um yeah yeah I think I'm just looking at there's there's a uh there's something really solid in that statement you know when we really do just say what is because a lot of times when somebody has a, a physical, mental, emotional disability or perceived disability, we're, we're all conditioned to pay attention to the physical. We're only paying attention to what the disability is. You know, he doesn't act right. He doesn't look right. He doesn't, you know, speak right, whatever. That's what we're paying attention to. But it doesn't negate the essence of that being. Right. And so like, how can we, can we invite ourselves and others to look a little bit deeper and to actually see where some of these behaviors are human? <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's, that's, that's what happens here. Yeah. <laughs> there was a, um, there was a client where, this is back in speech pathology days. There's a woman had a like third grade son and she came in one day and she said, um, they're creating a whole new plan at school for him because his behaviors have just gone over the top. And I said, well, what's the behavior? And she said, he's pulling the hair of the little girl in front of him. And she, he's you know putting things in the back of her hair and that kind of stuff. And I said, he likes her. I mean, what third grade boy doesn't do those kinds of things to get the attention of some, I said, and this kid was really a high functioning, you know, kiddo. And I said, let's just stop making everything about autism for this kid. It's like, that's the, that's the junk bin of everything that might be going wrong for him or anything that somebody doesn't like, it goes into that bin. And it just wasn't true. I mean, I just, I, I just took one look at him. I was like, you like her, don't you? And he just got this big grin on his face. Like, yes, I like her. <laughs> so that's sweet. Okay, this question <laughs> is, my eldest is going to college next year and very emotional. The past year his heart was hard and she has been, has been, become more self self-conscious due to being online a lot during COVID. How can we support and help her manage her feelings? Mm. Um, you know, first acknowledge them. They're real. Second, anywhere where you might be feeling the same, acknowledge that because that's also real, you know? Anywhere where you also had, um, again, that 
natural tendency to be uncomfortable in social situations or if you've ever had a moment where, where that was true for you as well, just share that with her. And um, because again, there's this feeling of one of the things that's really happened during this time and I've noticed it in myself huge is this isolation, this separation from other human beings has really created an insecurity in a lot of people. It's not just her. Um, if she already had that kind of predisposition, it's probably heightened, but we want her to know that. We want her to know that again, this is not a something's wrong with you thing. This is, that, you know, when she goes back to school and she's seeing these people, they're also going to be having that same kind of, um, those same kinds of thoughts and energy running through them. And when she can really begin to see that it's not just her, it's, it's everyone to one degree or another is having those feelings, then she starts, um, doing something that I think is very humane. When we understand that what's go going through us doesn't necessarily just belong to us. Number one, we start being much nicer to ourselves and we start being much nicer to other people. You know, we start, we start acknowledging that, wow, you know, you might look like you've got it all together, but there's probably an anxiety in you too. There's probably a stress in you too this first meeting. And then what we do is we start inviting her to, you know, again, if she's thinking in that way, then how can she make it easier for herself? How can she make it easier for somebody else? Yeah, and she's quite capable of doing that. She's just never been, uh, she's always thought it was about her, right? So she kind of, pulls that energy back in, but she kind of has, this one has a kind of a natural predisposition to hmm, lighten up people's lives. Yeah. And so um, just want to give her that power back. She's got this. Yeah, she's got it. She, she can do it. She just needs to hear that it's just not her. Okay, this question, it's more of a statement. Uh, I have taught my sister to say in her own head, not mine. If the emotion leaves, then she is just absorbing someone else's emotion. Can mm -hmm. you kind of explain energetically what is happening for empowerment's sake? Yeah, it's... Um... Well... There's a couple of different things here again. So it's never just black and white. It's like, um, so it can be really helpful to say, you know, not mine and, and notice what stays and what goes, um, not mine and, um, and noticing how the body feels or changes, that kind of thing. It's also, again, it's also helpful to, acknowledge that what is not hers is still moving through her, right? I just, um, it's taken me a long time personally to understand this and to the point of, you know, I mean, I, I do different practices. I take different homeopathic remedies for for, um, uh, you know, so that my field is not as, I want, to, I want to be able to receive when I want to receive, right? Like when I'm talking to you all, I want to receive. Um, but it's also true that like, say I get ready to get on a call and um, the people are anxious and they've got stuff going on. That's, that's also going to flush through my body, you know, and usually, 30, 40 minutes before the call, right? It's like, oh, you can feel that wave. So I think that for empowerment's sake, it's good to know that even though she's saying not mine or mine, and that gives some distinction, 
to still have some compassion for the fact that that there's something going on there's some capacity that allows her to process that information through her body yeah and i can just say for myself personally i'm still not quite there yet because especially lately with everything that's been going on sometimes those waves are bigger and it's like well i have to really catch myself and say okay you know instead of something's wrong with me because i'm feeling this huge wave of energy or or something's not quite enough within me because I can't control this wave of energy. It's having compassion for myself and having um, and and really giving myself a good talking to around the fact that this is a capacity that that energy must be flushing through because there's a capacity to help transmute it. Yeah, and so if we really, I mean, to me, that's the empowerment piece that there's a capacity there. Um, and what I will say too, is that, and I think I've said this on other calls, but we really have to understand now that we are energy first. We are energy and that regardless, our physical, mental and emotional bodies are all being utilized for the collective so that the collective can process everything that the collective needs to process in order to go to the next phase of our human evolution. So that means that if you are, sometimes the people who are, can feel like they're the most off balance in these times, really are the people that have the strongest constitutions. Their energy is strong enough to let that energy flush through. And um, and I, I honestly couldn't hear that myself for quite some time. You know, it's like, no, it's like, it feels bad. I don't like it. You know, it's like, get it away kind of thing. But the more I was doing that, of course, the more I was negating the capacity that was there. Yeah. And, um, and once I started to acknowledge that, then it seems like, okay, I'm still going to feel it, but it's going to move up and through. And so regardless of what each capacity is that any of us has, you might have a really strong mental capacity, a strong emotional capacity, strong physical capacity. If anything in you is that way, I guarantee that the collective energy might be moving through you. Okay, this question is, uh, this mom is doing a detox for herself and her son and he's feeling a little bit nausea and she's wondering if that is part of the totally. protocol. Yeah, yeah. I can say that one definitely because I'm doing one right now myself. So um, yeah, uh, yeah, things like um, detoxes definitely are gonna bring up nausea and even they can bring up some kind of, they can bring up dizziness. Um, when you're doing parasite protocols, um, gut related um, bacterial protocols um, that can it can do all kinds of things but definitely can make you nauseous definitely can make you exhausted um, definitely can make you a little bit anxious even for a bit so sometimes the anxiety goes up a little bit when you're doing that protocol um, but what I would say is again you know talk through it you know um, work through it but keep going because as soon as that die off starts to happen, um, well, that energy is gonna kick everything up. But once that's complete, it'll, it'll go back to a whole nother, a deeper uh, level of integration. So keep going, <laughs> keep going. All right, that's it on questions. Oh, awesome. These are good questions. Thank you, these are really good. All right, let me see if there's anything else I'm gonna share with you guys today. I'm just asking the kids if it's, um, if we really consider this population as a new species, like a new human species, they have different capacities, they have different abilities than were the norm up to that time that they started coming in mass. And 
slow but sure, and humans are notoriously slow at, for in change, <laughs> um, at least to a certain point. I think we're getting to a place where by hook or crook, it's just like everything's gonna pop open and um, we'll deal with the after effect. But what I wanna say is that if we see this population as a new species and that they have other capacities and abilities that have not been here prior to their being here, they also have challenges. There's no doubt we all do. So, and we're not gonna negate those. They need support with those challenges. But if we really start acknowledging the capacity that's there and start valuing that capacity we start also acknowledging the direction that humanity is going in, right? Because some of these new species capacities like multi-dimensional sensory experience, that's, we're all gonna have that. I mean, the wonder rare and other, we're all opening to it already, yeah? And so, so there are, so each individual on this planet has challenges and capacities. This population as a whole happens to exhibit uh, capacities that to me are almost new species-like. And we just want to acknowledge the fact that that's there so that we can start looking for those. So we can start looking for those capacities, paying attention to that, yeah? And as we do, we, we'll, we're gonna start to figure out, they are gonna start to figure out that these kids can start to use the capacities they have to help overcome some of their challenges. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we'll see where we go from here. <laughs> right. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you, everybody. Lots of love, and I'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>